Hello beautiful people, welcome to my channel. My name is Nina and today I want to talk about how to say no to shit you hate and how this is going to improve your life drastically. I'm a super big fan of Derek Sivers. Whatever he says is pure gold. One of the things that I really admire about him is, uh, it's actually a quote, no yes, either hell yeah or no. I use this rule all the time. It makes your life so much easier and more amazing. Let me tell you why. My problem often is that I'm completely overwhelmed with so many things and people wanna go out with you or they wanna meet you for quick talk and a coffee or you get projects and you're not sure if you should accept them or not you get job offers which sound maybe not that interesting but you're like oh, i don't have anything else in the pipeline at the moment or there's like a party going on and you're like oh maybe i should go or i should not go i'm not so sure let me tell you this just say no to all of this because none of that is screaming Ooh, it's gonna be exciting it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be like the best party ever none of that if i ever get invitations or uh, pitches or proposals and I feel about it like nah, I'm not sure I might have time to do it I just say no it, because it doesn't excite me and it probably will just in long term annoy me and it's gonna clutter my life so I just say no to all of that either that or my gut tells me that something's not right something doesn't feel as if I should do it or that it's like something you know sometimes stuff smells fishy and very often is then fishy i just say no i don't even give like an explanation or something i just say no thanks that's it you don't need to explain to people your personal decision i really don't know why but so many people don't listen to their gut feeling anymore we were so used to that when we were little kids maybe you remember i sure remember yeah i mean you just had this feeling going on in your tummy region not that kind of feeling now, but you had this feeling going on and you knew exactly that something is weird or we should listen to this more. Some people don't have it whatsoever. Others feel it like slightly, but they kind of, they tend to ignore it. You can train to listen to that, by the way. My opinion about this is that our society taught us to suppress this feeling, although it's so, so important. I mean, our gut feeling, that's our internal alarm system. And in my opinion, it's always right. We should totally listen to this all the time. For example, if your gut feeling is like, or your tummy feels weird and you're about to do a big investment, maybe it's not a good investment. Or maybe this Tinder dude is really a creep. I know so many examples of Tinder dudes or dates or guys. Still, it's probably not a good investment and it's probably a creepy, creepy Tinder dude that, and you might end up doing something super stupid or he might end up doing something that you won't like. So, like, don't go even that far down the road. Just don't do it. So yeah, whenever I said yes to stuff in the past that I didn't really feel like it, I usually got super annoyed or I got frustrated or I got hurt, sometimes even physically, which is not fun whatsoever. Why would I do that? Let me tell you an example, which is a personal story of mine. One time, a couple of years ago, I went wakeboarding with a couple of friends and I mean, I'm not too bad, it's just not one of my favorite hobbies, to be honest. And in this particular moment, I didn't really feel like it, but my friends were pressuring me and they told me like, oh, Nina, come on, everybody's doing it. And I was then, oh, okay, just leave me alone. I'm gonna do it, so you all just leave me alone with it. And what happened, I had a pretty bad accident with it and I hurt my knee. Uh, I couldn't walk properly for three months and until now, although this is like, happened about three years ago, until now my knee is, sometimes telling me okay slower maybe the squat is like too much for you today and it's uh, yeah i should have imagined i would have listened to my gut feeling i wouldn't have that problem right now since i'm saying no more often um amazing stuff happened first of all i feel way better with myself and i feel like this is this is me this is my personal decision this is really what i want to do not so much about what other people would like me to do so no people pleasing anymore no 
that's amazing. Another really nice effect of saying no to stuff that you don't feel like it or you're like, oh, this is probably not the best fit for me, projects or job opportunities. It frees up space in your personal time so you can do what you want to do. For example, for me personally, it's like I have more time for writing. I have more time to read. I have more time to spend with my loved ones. Instead of cluttering it with some project that might not be paid too well, that's super annoying, or the client is just was weird right from the beginning and in the end is like a hustle to get paid. So second reason, freeing up space in your personal life, which is amazing. And the third really, really great reason for saying no more often is that when this potential new client reaches out to you and you always want to work with this company or it's your dream client or whatever, you're available because you're not wasting your time with some other douchey project that doesn't lead to anything. So whenever I said no, really, really great opportunities presented themselves to me afterwards. And I had the possibility to say yes to them or not even yes, like hell yeah to them. And now you're like, okay, Nina, but what does that have to do with me? Uh, let me ask you something. How often do you say no to stuff? Or do you maybe say yes to things just out of being nice to somebody or you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings? You know those situations, right? It's like when your mouth is opening, you're like, yeah, sure. And your brain is just exploding and saying like, why would you do that to me? Yeah, those situations, I, nobody needs that. Who needs that? Nobody needs that. What I meant with this though is like, that, that it's not the same thing to say no to something that you really don't want to do because it's, it's going to be annoying or frustrating or you simply don't want to be bothered by that. That's different to, oh, I don't want to do it because I'm afraid I cannot do it. Or this is, oh, I'm leaving my comfort zone. I don't feel comfortable doing that. This is not what I'm talking about. Yes, you definitely should leave your comfort zone and you should do things that you're afraid of, but like in a good way you're afraid of, right? Because that's challenging and we all need challenges. So me saying, oh yeah, you should either say hell yeah or no to stuff. This is not what I mean by that. So yes, please leave your comfort zone. Please try out new things. Please go out and explore the world and do stuff that frightens you a tiny bit because this is good. So yeah, don't sabotage yourself by saying no to interesting stuff, to cool stuff, just because you're afraid. Don't do that. Let me give you a list of stuff where I recommend you should say no. So. Don't waste your time with people when you got already told you not to hang out with them, either because they're boring or they're not worth your time or there are so many different reasons why you shouldn't hang out with certain people. Maybe you need to be careful of them. Don't waste your time with those people. Also, don't waste your time with projects that will just clutter your life and lead to nothing. Or with events, same thing. For example, boring dinner parties or going to a club that you don't like because the music is shitty and the people who hang out there are shitty as well. Why would you go there? Just to be part of the crowd and like, not miss out on anything? Don't waste your time with stuff that annoys the shit out of you. Just don't. What I mean when I say that you should go with your gut feeling, that is not the same thing as this nagging little voice that everybody has in his or her head, which is called fear of missing out, FOMO. Hashtag. Hashtag FOMO. That one you should totally ignore. Okay, in case you don't know what fear of missing out is, let me give you a few examples. If this voice in your head is telling you, but maybe this is the career step you were always waiting for, that's yeah, probably not. Or if this voice is telling you, but this might be the man of your dreams and you want to marry this guy, but he's like a big weirdo and you don't feel comfortable with him and no, like this dude is not gonna change. Forget about it, honestly. Like he's not gonna change, by the way, People don't change, just as a side note. Sometimes this voice is like, but this might be a really cool party, but you wanna stay at home in your PJs, on the couch and stuff your face with popcorn and binge watch Netflix, uh, Jane the Virgin. Yeah, I love Jane the Virgin. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you feel like it, this party is not gonna be cooler than you staying at home on your couch, binge watching or reading or going to bed early because you have a ton of stuff to do and to work on. Then do that, for God's sake. Quick recap. If you're not super excited about a certain thing or your gut tells you something feels off, don't do it. 
period. And say no, thank you. But no, you can smile, always helps. Practice it, no. No, thank you. No. No, thanks. See, so many different ways you can say that. Now you. Last but not least, another area where I also feel it's super important to learn how to say no is everything related to personal boundaries and limits. It's so, so good to have healthy boundaries, in my opinion, no matter if that's physical boundaries. Maybe you don't want to be hugged or maybe you don't want to give kisses all the time. That's me, for example. Like when we were 15 years old in high school, all the girls were like, oh, it's like you better a kiss. I hated that. And I was like, no, thank you. And I probably that's the reason I don't have herpes. Probably I'm not saying that everybody who has herpes is because of that, but I've never had herpes and those chicks did just like, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like all this physical closeness, just not my thing. So physical boundaries, one example, or emotional boundaries. Maybe there's things that you don't want to talk about with certain people or with anybody. And that's totally fine. Say it. Or maybe there's cultural boundaries because you're from a specific cultural background. But in our world nowadays, we're exposed to different kind of, kind of cultures, right? And maybe there's certain things in your culture that are off limits or the other way around. Maybe there is things in your culture that you're very specific about. Maybe you pray five times a day and you need time for that. And you also need people in your life who are understanding. But again, I mean, that is all of those examples. If we want others to accept us for who we are, we need to be clear about our personal boundaries and about what is okay and what's not okay. As long as we are really clear about them right from the beginning when we start hanging out with each other or move to a new city or you have a new employer, just be clear about it and voice your personal boundaries, your personal limits in a very clear and simple language. And if somebody really oversteps, stand up for yourself, stand up for your values. That's super important nowadays. Don't just like let it slip by because then it's gonna happen again. I don't assume that people do bad things intentionally or that somebody wants to harm me. I just think that a lot of people don't think about certain things that they do. Still, they were probably acting the best way they could, but that doesn't mean that I have to let it go by. There's no harm in them saying, oh, by the way, that wasn't okay for me, or no, this is not what I meant. And for the future, please be aware of X, Y, Z. Obviously, this is only true to a certain extent. Nobody should be allowed to offend you in any way. Nobody should be allowed to trash your opinion. Nobody should be allowed to invade your privacy or even lay a finger on you. But that's a complete other sphere. Be very open and clear about what you want and what not. In the end, living peacefully together in our heterogeneous society means that personal limits and boundaries need to be respected by all of us. And trust me, I really believe in this. Lead by example and others will follow. It's not the easiest way. Yeah, I completely get that. It's probably easier a lot of times to just say, yeah, sure, or yeah, okay, or yes, uh, instead of putting your foot down and saying, no, I see it differently, or no, I'm not interested, or no, thanks, but no. So when was the last time that you said no and in which situation? Or are there situations where you wish you would have said no and why is that? I'm really, really curious, so please comment below and let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you got some value out of this. And if you liked it, you know what to do. Bye!